Hey guys, welcome to another Buckman's Model Mania. In this one, I'm going to go ahead and do book two, or issue two, of the uh, Moomin House. Here you can see the parts from that I didn't use last build, or last video. These are parts from issue one. The glue, the sandpaper, and the tape. And these two, most importantly, these two pieces of the stairs. You can see Moomin's bed. Moomin's still in the box. The stairs. This is Snufkin. And he's from issue two as well as these parts here. So give me just a second while I uh, open the book, open the parts, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, got the uh, parts open. It was a little bit difficult. The, the parts here did not want to, the top didn't want to come off very well. And you've got Snufkin here. So you got Snufkin, you've got the frame for his tent, and then the fabric for his tent. There should be a triangular piece in there somewhere. Go ahead and stand up Snufkin, and he's going to create an issue for me because I don't have really won't really have a box to put him back into got some uh, tape here the stairs the stair flats to go along with the risers from last time sides of the stairs you can see underneath there there's another piece of tape there's some parts for a um, for what would it be a coat tree so let me move things around here and go ahead and get started. First thing I gotta do is get this out, grab the chisel blade again, very carefully because I don't want to scratch paint, separate these parts. These are both parts four, and they're they're being a little bit difficult to separate. And since those cut marks right there are actually going to be back inside, I'm not going to worry about sanding them off. But what I do need to make sure is that the risers are actually going to fit. And so the risers will go on like that. They actually slide in really, really easy. want to go ahead and sand this riser down because it's got those two spots where it was cut from the um, back wall or this riser here on the last video which was actually yesterday that way there won't be any bumps So the first thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of glue, and I have a micro sponge here to actually uh, to actually spread glue if I need to. I've got out a Q-tips as well. Make sure this glue is clear. Things I should have done, something I should have done before starting the video, but that's okay. Yeah, it's clear. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue on the top here, maybe. That riser actually came up just a hair, that should be okay. What I'm doing here is just sliding a paper clip down in there to clear the glue from the hole. So let me slide this in here. Much better. Before it wasn't going at all. Do a little bit of glue on here. Slide it back as far as it will go. If it will go on there. There we go. And there's actually a 
flat spot. You can see, and, and you see right there, I may, I don't think I'm going to take that apart. It's just going to be the way it is. I didn't get it flushed down here. Not much I can do. And you're not going to see that once it's in place. So let me apply glue here to the bottom of the riser. Shouldn't need it anywhere besides the bottom of the riser and the face of the step itself. Maybe just a little bead along the back. Along the back so that it's not going to show in the front. Slide this down in here. Q-tip to remove the excess glue here, as well as here, and there's a little bit on the face right there, right there. Oops. So let me go ahead and put the next step on there. So let me do it on here instead. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but there's a hum that suddenly started in the background. I think something outside. This is a little bit tight. Might have wanted, probably should have sanded this first a little bit to make sure. Go ahead and clean off the glue underneath here. And it, it's white glue, so it's actually going to dry clear. <coughs> and that spot isn't right there isn't going to matter or there because that's where the riser is actually going to hit. Do the same as I did before. It would be the glue across the bottom. Be to glue across the back here. Push this down and back. Clean off the excess glue right there and there. And there is the steps almost complete. And here is the top step. So I'm going to put glue along in these spots here and then along the top here. And on the bottom of the tabs as well. Well, this may, this glue may look like Elmer's. It's actually a uh, glue, glue called Weld Bond. It is a thicker white glue, so that it actually bonds a little bit better than Elmer's would. Again, clean this. Matter of fact, let me take the micro brush. Much better. And there you have the steps. Only that one is a little bit funky and you're not going to notice it once it's down. Matter of fact, when I set it down here, you don't see it. So then we're going to take these two pieces and they actually have beveled edges to match the beveled edges on that piece. Kind of nice. I'm going to run a... Let me just make sure how these go in here. 
thin bead of glue down the side, thinner across the bottom because I don't want it to seep out. And the pegs there have to go up. So push that on there. Making it flush as best I can. I'm not going to mess with the glue yet because it might, I might be shifting it just a little bit. It actually says once the steps are done, you can just the instructions later on say to sand it to where it would look like they were walking up and down it. You know, to give it a little bit of weather. Once you do that, you take the top step here. And the curved portion is going to go towards the house. And that's going to make sure that all of this is lined up correctly. I'm not going to bother to put glue on the pegs at all. Yeah, maybe. Let me put it on the inside face. Come across here. And I've, I've looked for tip videos on the Moomin House and there are very few. The only one that I've found that does a lot of the house, I want to say she was, I don't know, I'm not sure where she was from. But it wasn't in English, so it was one of these things if I watched it, I read the subtitles if she had any, and kind of was on my own. Whoops, I just pushed that too far. What happened was I came off of here. So let me make sure this is pushed. I'm pushing only on the edges, pushing the edges together. Push that one down a little bit because it's popped up a hair. A little bit of extra glue right there. Same right there. And so there's the steps all done. This one needs to go a hair further forward. That should be flush there in the back. And I'm just making the minor adjustments so that I don't have to later on try and break glue off. Actually, I've lost my glue here. Let me run a bead in there. Not so much lost it, but it's popped out of hair. I'm gonna do the same across all four sides in here. So you see I just ran a bead of glue around there. Got to be careful not to block those two holes. Not sure what they're for, but they're not for. They're not until later on. So that is the finished stairs. Let me go ahead and pause for a second while I get the other parts out for the uh, coat tree. <clears throat> so whatever that hum was, it just stopped. Okay, so here are the rest of the parts. This is the tape for the the uh, snuff content. The actual hooks for the coat tree, the base legs, nicely painted. You can see the holes there, and I've seen there are some issues with that. And this will actually be the uh, part of the base. So the first thing I got to do, and this one, that I can't use a the chisel blade; it's too fat. First thing I've got to do is cut. All the parts out from the uh, for the base and the the hanger portions so give me a second I'm gonna pause cut them out and be back in a sec 
So I'm actually going to work each part individually. So there's the wood left from after I cut these four legs off. And so what I have to do, let me, I'm going to test fit one first. Actually, I'm going to test fit all four of them, and then I'm going to come back and take them off and glue them one at a time. Just want to make sure that they're all going to fit. I know this is very small, hard to see from the distance. So once I get the last one on, I will lift it up and show you if I can keep the other one from the opposite side from popping off. An adjustment and actually it also helps once you have glue on them because it lets them slip a little bit more than they are so that is how that goes together now, like I said I'm going to pop actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop them all off glue them and then be right back on to the next step okay I've got three out of the four done I just want to show how small that little piece is that you're trying you're trying not to break either of those tabs off which is why this is a little bit tricky not too bad though got the glue in there and the other issue is that when I'm pushing on this one I'm kind of where I'm trying to push from there's an other the other leg on already so that's on there like that and it does sit flush or sit flat so next thing is to cut these out and this may take a little bit longer because when I cut these off I've got square pegs and I've got round holes plus I need to make sure that I've got the right ones for the right spot I'll be right back okay you can see the hooks for the tree stand are off. I actually had to cut had to cut the frame off of it to be able to get them out without breaking them. And I did try test fitting one. What I'm probably gonna or not what I'm probably gonna do with it. Now and I'm, I'm gonna try it with the white glue first. It says that in the instructions you can try CA glue if you want of instead of white glue and I understand why because CA glue bonds almost instantly but I'm going to be using the white glue just because it seems to me the better way to go and I'm not going to um, I'm not gonna put any glue on the pins because you can see there the hole is a little bit squared off where I tried putting this one in so it's going to go on here like that. I've put a little bit of glue on the top of the hook. It needs to be straight with the hole. On the camera it looks a little bit it looks a little bit off. It is just a hair off. there it's on and I'm going to do the same with the others I'm I'm also going to make sure because there are two different heights you've got ones you've got higher holes and lower holes higher pegs and lower pegs so let me go ahead and plug these on I'm going to try and keep up the banter but if I can't you'll know what's going on a little bit of glue very gently push this in here it's going to be interesting with the other two because I'm going to have to work around these ones there's a little bit of excess glue right here I may actually put a puddle of glue down and apply the glue that way make sure these are pretty even with themselves So let me put a little bit of glue on this one. It's 
probably, and that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue on them and then use the uh, sponge brush to, uh, or the micro brush to apply the rest. Dropped it and the glue saved it. I was like, no! I was sure I just lost that part. And because of how hard those go in there, I'm going to have to be really gentle. Actually, interesting, that hole is drilled off center. So I'm doing my best to make sure that everything is perfect, but it doesn't matter all that much. And what's also going to help, actually, I'm, yeah, I just thought about it. I'm not going to add extra glue because you can see it's white with the laser um, the char from the lasers when they laser cut the wood I'm not gonna glue it after I get it in unless it just won't stay which is what it might be doing right now what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to um, paint it and that's gonna help hold it in place if I can get it to go in. Pretty straight. This one's a little bit off kilter. As long as it's perfect when I go to paint it, paint it the glue will actually help to hold it together. I mean the paint. So there. You can see it's not perfect, but at that scale, it's should be pretty good. And then the last part is going to be attaching it to the base itself. And that's just a matter of you got the peg here. Add some glue to it. and push it down into the hole. It's very close tolerance on it. So you can see it's all the way down in the hole. Legs are still on. And on. It's a little bit there. It was a little bit tilted and actually let me turn it just a hair because I'm, I'm odd that way. I want my legs and my uh, hooks to be lined up. Let me double check. They're close. They're close enough. Straight. Let me see, I can use the camera. Yeah, that should be good. So now we have Snuffkin falling over. We've got the bed, we've got the coat rack, we've got the stairs. Let me get the stuff together for Snuffkin's tent and I will be back in a second. All right, so there's, there's the start of the tape and what what I do or what you have to do for this is you just take the tape peel it put it across wherever you're trying to get it with a pair of scissors and cut it off these might be a hair long because this one hangs out but we'll see so I'll be right back after I do that with one here, one here, here, then down the A-frame and across, same on the other side and the other side of the A-frame. Actually, I just looked down at the instructions. This A-frame, the wider A-frame, yes, 
this A-frame doesn't need it because it's going to be held on by the, uh, the fabric's going to hold itself on. So. Okay. So I've applied tape to all the required spots. This is actually the front of the tent. I misread that. It makes sense because you want the back of the tent to be sticking f pretty firm. Next step is going to be to take all the tape off and then put the tent on. The tent is going to be a little bit tricky. You see the back is closed, the front is open. It does say to apply a drop of bead of glue down the sides of the open the front flap to keep it fraying from fraying. So I'm going to take the tape off, be back, and depending on how long, how much of a pain it is to put the fabric on, I may do that on uh, video. I may not. So back in the flash. Okay. So I've got all the. Um, tape uncovered. So now I'm going to put this inside out very carefully. There should be holes for the uh, yeah there's holes for the pegs. Let me see if I can get this to go on here without too much trouble. There's one peg. It's actually sticking to the um, to the work surface. Come on. Pull that across. Working pretty well. Let me see if I can get this reversed the way it's supposed to be so I can reach it across here. I almost wonder if it would be easier without the tape. I apologize, I just realized I might have been off, off um, screen. So come down here, each of these pegs. pulled that too far. No, actually that's good. Double check. Ah, I didn't say until now to put the double-sided tape on the bottom and that makes sense to put it down there. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be a lot. It just has to be some to hold the sides down once they're in place. That's not quite where I need it. So there's the first piece. And I noticed while I was pulling the tape earlier, or <coughs> pulling the, t the uh, cover off the tape, I cut my nails today. Never do that when you're going to be working with double sided tape. See, I pull that down like that, makes that front edge, or that edge look pretty nice there. So, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the rest of this, the uh, bottom, and we'll uh, come back to put the triangle on the front. 